You know, I think every one of us loves ghost stories. And Maine is full of good ghost stories. And today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about a few ghost stories from the islands of Casco Bay. I wrote about those islands and those uh, ghosts out there in an earlier book called Maine Magic. It was a collection of stories that came out a few years ago. And let me read you this piece about the island ghosts of Casco Bay. There are ghosts among the islands of Casco Bay, and on stormy nights close to Halloween, they prowl the shores. Any night now you may hear ghostly cries or see ghostly lights coming from the Casco Islands. So here are a few of the many ghosts who may be prowling out there tonight. On Thanksgiving, a few years back, a fisherman farmer by the name of Wilson took down his gun and went hunting out on Orr's Island. His wife worried when after many hours she had heard his shots, but still her husband had not returned. So good wife that she was, she took down her own gun and went out to Orr's Island to look for him. Neither of them returned that long night, nor the next morning whereupon their friends and neighbors got up an expedition to search for them on Orr's Island. And they rowed out to the island, and there they found, by a giant rock, two skeletons, one of a man, the other of a woman. Their bones were picked clean, and close by, they found the skeletons of 12 wolves, all picked clean. What happened? And is that howling sound you hear at night the wail of the Wilsons? Or is it the wail of the wolves? Well, now there's another story, which I rather like, a short one. Out on Pond Island in Casco Bay, there's a strange ghost story concerning a hermit and his dog. On stormy nights, some have said, they see the ghostly figure of a man walking the beach with a dog at his heels. Others say they hear the ghost calling to his dog, and still others say they hear the long, sad howls of the dog baying to heaven. The macabre story behind all of this is that the hermit and his dog lived alone, but together, on Pond Island. They were seen almost daily from other islands and from passing boats, and then suddenly they were seen no more and some concerned neighbors came ashore to look for them. There on the beach, hidden by a rock, they found the skeleton of a dog, and five feet distant, they found the skeleton of the hermit. And the question asked, but never answered to this day is, did the starving man eat his dog, or vice versa? And the pirate days, there was a famous Captain Peef Captain Keefe of Cliff Island, who probably may have been the most miserable villain in all of Casco Bay. On stormy nights, he'd tie a lantern around the neck of his horse and ride up and down the shore to mislead ships at sea onto the deadly ledges. And as the ships hit and broke up, Captain Keefe would murder any survivors who struggled ashore and bury them in a meadow a meadow that's still known as Keefe's Garden. Then the evil man would salvage the ship's cargo and sell it. On stormy nights now, sad cries still arise from Keefe's Island, the cries of drowning sailors begging not to be shot by Keefe. And finally, another little story, this one from Haskell Island again out in Casco Bay, off of Harpswell. Almost a hundred years ago, an old hermit lobsterman named Humphrey died on Haskell Island, and huge rats picked his bones clean. Rats took over the entire island, and no man dared set foot on Haskell, until two young mills bribe of savage cats ashore and settled in there. The savage cats multiplied, and finally killed off all the rats. But the multitude of cats, savage cats, now drove off the rightful owner and anyone else who tried to land on the island. 
The irate owner set out to poison the beaches, and he killed all the cats. And to this day, they say, no cat and no rat has ever set paw on Haskell Island. Well, of ghost stories up down the main coasts, and I love to hear them and read them at night. Some of them are true. All of them, I'm sure, are based on some good fact and a little bit of rumor. But anyway.